What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to the new channel and in this case we're going to start things off with the Air Like series, analyzing the profile and breaking it down from Bob Sala. Now Bob Sala is a German photographer who takes very beautiful portraits in Germany with a very particular look, very orangey and very warmish tones, much like Luis Klaas profile that we already analyzed, I'll link that video up here in the card if you want to go check it out, but his profile is very artistic and tending towards that film look. So you know how this works guys, first we're going to jump into Instagram, break down his style, how he takes his photographs, with what gear and a bit of analysis on his color grading. Then in Lightroom we're going to create a preset on a photograph and see how it performs on several scenarios. So let's jump into Instagram and break out his style guys. So this is his profile on Instagram guys, Bob underscore Sala is his Instagram handle. If you want to go support him go ahead and follow him. Also you can buy his presets to achieve his precise and unique look. And just a reminder I'm not trying to copy his style in particular. The purpose of this tutorial is for you guys to learn how to achieve certain skin tones and certain color grading techniques within Lightroom. So you can dominate the profile, the program and you can achieve your own personal look in the future. So having said that, let's jump into his style. So first thing that we can see in his description is that he's a Fujifilm ambassador. That means that he shoots either with an APS-C sensor or with a medium format sensor which is larger than the full frame and it's a lot more expensive. Now Fujifilm they have a mode in their cameras where they replicate basically or they simulate the film look or analog style. And that's basically what I can see here. Most of his shots are simulating the analog or the film look. So maybe he uses that effect or maybe he does it all in post edition. Now he doesn't shoot with a medium format camera. He shoots with an X100F which is now discontinued and an X-T20. Now these cameras are fantastic, they're APS-C but still they have very high specs in an APS-C body, so that's incredible, guys. So, jumping into his style, the first thing that we can notice is the warmish tones are everywhere, guys. Every single photo has a very warmish tone of a very warmish vibe to them. Also, we can see that all the images have a very rough and very big film grain, and that's very notorious, resembling a very texturized and retro look. Now, looking into this one, we can see that the blacks are very raised, are very faded away. That's down in the tone curve. And again, if we keep scrolling down, every image has a bit of orangey tones to it. Whether it be in the skin tones, whether it be in the lighting, maybe sometimes the light comes from a candle, sometimes it's just the sun reflecting into the house, or sometimes it's just the lamp in the back. But most of the times it's just post edition, guys. All is done in the camera calibration, HSL, and in the temperature, in the white balancing. Now here we can see a portrait. This portrait is a quite a big resemblance of his main style. Here we can see that the skin tones are tending towards the orangey tones. Now that's done in the camera calibration guys with the white balancing. Everything has a bit of orangey or a bit of warmish tones. Here we can see the yellow fridge which is tending towards the oranges. Everything is quite alterated to be a bit to the retro look. If we keep scrolling down, sometimes he alters for more natural skin tones but still they have that orangey vibe to them. Now this portrait is very nice, here we can see that the skin tones are not exaggerated, not completely orange, but they are alterated, here we can see some blushiness, and that's down in the camera calibration in the green primary. Now other than that we can see that yes, there's warm light inside, and also the model and the blues and the greens are quite desaturated and lightened up, that's done in the HSL tabs. Now contrary to that photograph, here we can see this one with the skin tones very exaggerated towards the orangey tones. Now, he is not afraid of mixing up the skin tones and messing them up. They're not very accurate in this image, but they are very flashy and that's a bit of his style. Now, this model is very tan, but still here we can see that she doesn't have jaundice in real life. Uh, the colors are very orange and very yellow. Now, if we keep scrolling down, we can see that there's a constant. Some of the skin tones that he has are very altered. They almost look like the Simpsons, but in some cases they're more natural. This one here is completely yellow. Uh, completely unnatural but that's just his style very sepia now in this portrait of himself in the mirror here we can see the camera that's the fujifilm t20 and again everything in the background of the mirror or around the mirror is very desaturated and tending towards that retroist tones now the blues are turning towards the aquas the greens are turning towards the teals then the reds are turning towards the oranges that's a thing that we have to remember so that's basically his style guys uh, as a constant we can see that most of his portraits are taken inside with the light very dimmed down or very diffused. Sometimes he uses candles, lamps, or just the sunlight to illuminate the model or the scene, but most of it is done in post-edition. So I'm really sorry for that saw in the background, guys. 
just the neighbors doing their jobs but let's jump into instagram and edit this guys but before that if you're just interested in the final results and you want to skip this tutorial you can just download the edit like preset pack which is linked down below in that preset pack this preset is going to be added alongside with the profiles from source touch alan palander garrett king which is the same as source touch luis class monaris all of them are added in that edit like preset pack now let's jump into lightroom so guys here in line we have these portraits now i'm not a portrait photographer so i don't have too many some of them are inside like bob style style and some of them are in the exterior so let's jump into this one and start editing guys now in the develop tab what i'm going to do is basically first achieve the film look style and then i'm going to achieve the skin tones in the hsl color grading and the camera calibration now remember that the white balancing exposure and contrast will largely depend on each image so those um, we're not going to move them until the end First thing I'm going to do is pull down the highlight. Remember that film cameras really had a very nice dynamic range in the highlight row. So I'm going to go with a minus 50. Then the shadows, I'm just going to pull them down. In this case, I'm going to pull them down to a minus 40. The whites, I'm going to pull them up to achieve a bit more contrast in the skin tones to a plus 40. And the black, we're not going to move them in this case. Now, clarity and presence. Remember that in those days, yes, dynamic range was very good. But the lenses weren't, they weren't as sharp as they are today. So I'm just going to reduce a bit of sharpness with a minus 6 in both clarity and texture. Then in vibrance, I'm just going to desaturate basically everything with a minus 14 in the vibrance and a minus 11 on the saturation. Now the differences between vibrance and saturation are very simple. Vibrance is a bit more intelligent of a tool. If I desaturate, use a desaturation tool to desaturate this scene that we have here, everything, every single color will be desaturated. But if I use Vibrance, the colors that are more dominant in the image won't be affected as much as the weaker colors. So you can be a bit more selective with the Vibrance so you don't desaturate the essence of the image. Okay, next up in the tone curve, we're not going to expose with the first one or use the RGB channels. We're just going to go with a simple one with the RGB tone curve. Put a point above the shadows over here, pull it down. Then here in the highlights, pull it up just a bit. And then the blacks, remember that the blacks were completely raised on the image, not too much, not over here, but just a bit, so the blacks are a bit more faded away. Okay, now in the HSL. Now here I'm just going to explain to you what I'm going to do, then just going to fast forward to the final results or the final values, so you can just copy them, screenshot them, or pause the video, because, well, basically you don't need to see every single value that I move. Here in the hue, I'm just going to make everything towards the plus, so the reds are more towards that brick or that orange brick like color, the oranges towards the yellows and so forth, the aquas towards the blue. So basically altering the colors towards that retro look. Here we go. Those are the results. The blues, I just altered them towards the aquas is the only one that goes to the negative. And then in saturation, I'm just going to desaturate everything to achieve that faded or desaturated look. So those are the values for the saturation guys, I played around to achieve these values, it's not just arbitrary guys. Now in luminance, what I'm going to do is just lighten the colors a bit, so they're a bit less vibrant. Okay, so those are the values for the luminance, now we're going to jump into the HSL and here we're going to start adding that yellowish tones or orangey tones into the skin tones. So. The split toning is no more. This is now color gray. Now we have the midtones also added and the midtones normally control the skin tone. So in the shadows, I'm not going to play around too much. I already know the values I'm going to apply. I already played around. So I'm going to add a teal color to the shadows with 175 on the hue and the saturation just going to go to plus plus 15. Here now we can see that these shadows have this um, aqua like color. Then the midtones, we're going to go with a color that's very orangey with 38 and the saturation all the way down to the 15. Now we can see that the skin tones have a little bit of orange. Then the highlight, we're going to go again with a 43, which is also an orangey like color, and the saturation all the way down to the 41. Now we can click this button on and off to see what we've done. And the skin tones are a bit more orangey, but a bit too green. But remember, we're not finished. Now here in the balance, which is going to go with a plus 25, the balance just determines to which spectrum to the highlights or to the shadows the image goes so if we go to the shadows everything turns towards the blues that we added in the shadows to the plus 100 everything turns towards that sepia tone that we added in the highlights so just to a 25 will be enough for now now sharpening in the detail we're just going to reduce it to zero remember that we don't want any post sharpening and then the effects we're just going to add that grain that we saw so we're going to go with a plus 47 on the quantity plus 80 on the size, which will make it very notorious, and the roughness to a plus 77. 
Now, if we zoom in, here we can see that the film grain is very not dominant and it adds that texture that we saw on his photographs. Next, camera calibration. Now in camera calibration, we're gonna just finish off the job by adding those rich skin tones. These will affect the primary colors from the image. So they will largely affect every single color. But in order to achieve his style, we need to move them. So the reds, if we go to the left, everything turns towards the magenta, to the other side towards the yellows. We want something in the middle with a plus 23 and the plus 25 on the saturation. Now remember that in Bob Salas images, some of the blushiness really pops up. That's down here in the green primary. If we go to the other side, to the plus 100 and pull up the saturation, we can see that the blushiness and parts of the face of Danny really starts to pop up. So we're just gonna go with a plus 100 and the saturation, we're not gonna go too much to plus 52. Then the blue also controls skin tones. Here we can see how they alter. To the negative, we're gonna go with a minus 47 and the minus 47 with a plus four on the saturation basically adds that orangey tones that we were looking for. So we can click this button on and off to see what the camera calibration has done. And basically the skin tones are getting there guys. Now this is the base of the edit. We're not quite finished to achieving his results, but this is the base of the preset. So I'm just gonna save it, hit the plus sign on presets, create a preset, enter the name, Pop Sala, and then remember that white balance, exposure and contrast, we're not gonna mark, mark them because those will depend on each image. Hit create, and then it's gonna be down here under user presets. Remember that this preset is gonna be up here in the edit like preset pack which will be linked down below. Okay, so the preset is finished, but we still have some work to do in this image. For starters, I'm gonna ump up the exposure just a bit, pull up the shadows. In this case, the shadows are very dark. Just reduce a bit of the contrast. And then if you want the skin tones to be a bit more exaggerated towards the oranges, just gonna pull up the temperature up until we're happy with those results. Now, this is a bit like Bob Salas style. His style is very, exaggerated in some photographs in some in others it's a bit more natural just double click the temperature to return to the original file yeah like that is looking quite nice if you want something a bit more unrealistic like bob sala does sometimes just pull the temperature up okay let's edit another photograph in this case we have this portrait in the shadows let's go to the develop tab and in this case this image is going to replicate a bit of the colors that we added in the hsl with the background with a lot of colors here we can see that this yellow pen and this green one are very saturated let's see how the preset performs let's apply it again everything is very blue now if we expose the image everything is going to tend towards that yellowish and orangey tones so here we can see that the skin tones are very nice very orangey just like we wanted the pens have altered their colors to be a bit more retro and a bit less vibrant as well as the back a shelf over here and everything is a bit more retro and very nice according to Bob Salas style. Again if you want to exaggerate a bit the effect just pull up the temperature just a bit to make her a bit more orange. Okay here we have another portrait of Danny let's see how it performs on the exteriors with the lush greens let's see how the greens are altered and here we can see that this image is very contrasty basically because in the exterior the light is very harsh and the shadows are very uh, again, very black. So let's pull down the contrast, pull up the exposure, and then pull up the temperature just a bit to ensure that we have the yellowish skin tones. Okay, quite nice again, guys, but normally his portraits are indoors, guys, not outside. Again, this is another portrait of Danny in the streets. Let's apply the preset, looking quite nice. And let's pull up a bit of the exposure, and as you can see, we're losing some information in the highlights. So I'm just gonna pull down the highlights just a bit more, and the white, just like that but the skin tones are there guys they're quite nice you can see that retro look in the background very nice and then again if we want the, to exaggerate the example or the effect just apply a bit more temperature to make her a bit more yellow and everything to, tending towards that sepia tone and finally we have this image over here let's apply the preset to pull up the exposure and as you can see the skin tones are very orange quite nice I like it like this but again Bob Sala would obviously pull up the temperature to exaggerate this effect. So that's about it guys, that's Bob Salas style or at least my interpretation on his color grading. Remember to put down in the comments down below any profile that you want me to analyze and gladly I will give it a look. Anyway guys, this preset that we've just created, I've added it to the Edelite preset pack which is linked down below. There you can find the preset from Garrett King, Alan Palander, Monaris, Pau Claver, all of them are linked down below. So. That's about it guys. If you want to support me, consider liking the video, sharing it with a friend, that really helps me out, or just subscribing. I'm Tony Fuentes, hope you're all doing well. Cheers to all of you, see you in the next one.